Hey everyone, my name is Wanderer, and I just completed my first 1.9 playthrough of Fallout 4 Horizon. Did it on a permadeath run on Desolation Mode, and I wanted to do a quick video for all the new players out there or returning players who are picking up Horizon just now and would like to know what they should do in their first couple of hours of play to make sure they get us started on the right foot. First thing you should do is head over into the other Cryopod section because there is some loot over here. In fact, if I turn my ENB off, you can actually see there is some purified water over here. Water is extremely difficult to come by, so any purified water you can get will be very helpful. Of course, we're going to pick up our trusty baton for the vault section. We're going to also loot this room because there is a whole bunch of stuff in here, including some Curex and other stuff. After that, head on through into the dining room area of the vault. Hit yourself your first rad roach, and you're going to notice a new button in Giant Horizon 1.9 that will allow you to harvest enemies. This is true for both human enemies, ghouls, and also animals. So we can get meat from animals. From ghouls, you can get things that are used for fertilizer. And from humans, you're going to be able to scrap everything on them right from their body. Go ahead and loot everything in the vault. Make sure to pick up the Vault Tech Training Manual that's present in this desk here. That's a free perk point for early on. Also, in the Recreation Terminal, you can find a Hollow Tape. Inject that Hollow Tape just for fun so you can play it later or because you can sell it for a good amount of caps later on as well. Again, we have some more Rad Riches up here. Make sure to dispatch those, harvest them, and head into the next room where you'll find the Overseer's Office. Here you're going to find some Limb Trauma Supplies a combat stim pack, which is very rare, and some first aid supplies. First aid supplies are used to heal you, those are basically like a bandage. Stim packs are very, very, very rare. You'll find these in some places from enemies, but they're quite rare. You'll also see a locksmithing or a lock breaking item down here, as well as some ammo in the desk here. And you'll be able to actually go into here. You could use the lock breaking thing here, but I wouldn't recommend it. You can get a bobby pin just over here so grab that head on over do your best not to break it because it's your only one Sweet. with this open you can then use the locksmith tools to break open this cryolator case that is a guaranteed success now we get the cryolator yes. which also comes with 200 cryo cells it does very little damage but it is a lot of free ammo and uh it's pretty good for dealing with little pesky stuff like uh flies and rad riches, etc. We also get a stealth boy, very useful and also very rare, and a voice activated upgrade for the Pip-Boy software. Of course, we don't have our Pip-Boy yet, so we can't really make use of that, but we will in a second. In this hallway, I like to kind of make some noise and activate a couple of the rad roaches here because you don't want to fight them all at once. You actually want to come back here and let them come to you and then kill them from stealth as they come around the corner. That will make sure that you get the stealth bonus. You have to just wait a second for your AP to regen. And that way we can take them out with minimal fuss and not take too much damage. Another advantage here is that we can build up a crit, which means that we can use that crit later on on a more powerful enemy for a guaranteed headshot crit. And you could one shot a very powerful enemy later on by doing that. After your character equipped your Pip-Boy, head over to the aid section and you'll find the Pip-Boy software upgrade. Go ahead and use that. Robgo software upgrade is now complete. Welcome, Commander. Who... what are you? I am the Robgo Military Auxiliary Intelligence and Navigation Entity. After that's done, go ahead and pop open that vault door and we'll go ahead and loot everything else in this room. Should find some more 9mm rounds, another jumpsuit, a second combat stim pack, some Rataway units. Can also find a couple of random junk items down here in the water. This Blast Radius board game has nuclear material in it, which nuclear material is very, very valuable in Horizon. It's one of the main components you're gonna need. There's also some other random stuff over here. Here you might wanna make your first save. That way, if you ever want to come back and do things differently, you can, and you can also skip the intro sequence. 
You're gonna get a pop-up here that tells you about revival mode. Basically in Horizon, there is a revival mode which allows you to revive at your nearest settlement instead of dying and having to reload. You might think this is overpowered, but in reality, revival mode is more challenging than death because you have to live with the mistakes you've made in terms of losing the resources. The biggest challenge in Horizon, especially on Desolation mode, is going to be managing your resources, whether that be your healing items, your adhesive for crafting, or other things like food, water, etc. You can go into the options here and turn it off if you don't want to. You can also change the revival mode difficulty, etc., but in my opinion, you should definitely leave it as default and just play with it as it is. It's balanced, it's great. I think it's a great feature for Horizon. Finally, we can pick up our gun. And here we can change our stats to whatever we want them to actually be. This is what I went with for my Desolation Mode playthrough, and I'll explain more about that later in a different video. But if you want to copy-paste my build, here it is. You also notice a couple of things that you got in the vault. One is a vault tech training manual. These are rare, but they provide you with a free level up perk point. You can hit that and then spend on whatever you want in here. There are lots of good first options. Going with something like Hunter to get more meat from animals is a good idea because you're going to be getting lots of animal kills as you explore around Sanctuary and you will want to explore around Sanctuary. Survivalist is also a good option. Choice is really yours. Personally, I almost always put my first point into Hunter. You also notice that we have a field kit and a weapon kit. These are unique to Horizon. Your field kit allows you to scrap things in the field, so you can hit this and then exit your Pip-Boy, and it'll bring up a menu here that'll allow you to do a whole bunch of stuff. You can set your followers to have different commands. You can set their distance from you. You can look at their skills. We don't currently have a follower, so we're not gonna see their skills, but their skills will increase their damage resistance and their damage output. You can also bind this to an ability. So I'm going to bind this now to 8, that way I can access it quickly. I'm going to also bind my weapon kit to 7, that way I can get that quickly too. Two of the biggest things you'll be doing in this menu will be doing your field scrapping and junk scrapping. So you can scrap things in the field by going to field scrapping and selecting items to scrap. From here you have a menu where you can decide what items you'd like to toss into here to be scrapped. This can be useful because items of course can get rather heavy. Once things are in there, it's going to process the items and it will give you a pop-up telling you what it could or could not scrap. You can also go into junk scrapping here and you can actually scrap all the junk in your inventory. This will break it down to the base components. This can be useful to reduce carry weight out in the field and also to make it easier to see what you actually have. So everything has been salvaged now in my inventory. That was pretty much instant. We can go over to junk now and look and everything that could be scrapped is broken down into base components. You can see the base components down here with the little ingot icon Everything that's not a base component that cannot be scrapped that has other uses is going to be up on top here. Some items like these cracked bottles and clipboards and such are considered trash. Those can be processed back at your base by settlers later on. Some more aid supplies in the first aid thing here. Some more random junk. If you want to go back down in the vault, you can press this button and go onto the center here and you'll be able to go down. I didn't know that for a long, long time. Of course, there's a second trailer here we can loot some 10 mil rounds, and you can notice that you can use the 10 mil rounds in your 9 mil gun. So if I equip my pistol and press the 7 key to bring up my weapon management, I can change this from 9 mil to 10 mil. There are actually several different calibers that we can use in this, and depending on what type you use, it will have more or less damage. You can also change it to be semi-auto or automatic. Of course, automatic is going to do more damage per second, but you'll have a lot of recoil to deal with and you'll blow through your ammo very quickly. Unlike in the base game, automatic mode does not reduce the damage done. Automatic is always going to be more DPS, but it'll be a lot harder to control the gun. After you deal with the bloat flies and rat roaches in Sanctuary, you can now go into the workshop. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go into Architect and go to Utilities and build a scrap cleanup station. This will allow you to immersively scrap everything. You'll be asked if you'd like to increase the maximum build limit for settlements. I would advise going ahead and doing this. There's really no reason not to. And then we're going to go in here and scrap everything. This will scrap the majority of items in Sanctuary and clean it up nicely for you and put everything into your workshop. This is not quite as quick as using a scrap all command, but it is a little bit safer. In the meantime, you can go back into your house over here and grab your special book and your grognac. Yes. For my special stat, I put my point into intelligence. I didn't really need anything else, so I figured why not just go some intelligence. There's quite a bit to scrap in Sanctuary, so just be patient. It can take a little bit. 
but it is much, much quicker than scrapping everything yourself. You also note that Horizon does not scrap the workbenches, so if you want to use those, you can. I tend to not use them. I tend to just use the Horizon's built-in all-in-one crafting system, though you definitely should keep the power armor station, unlike me who just scrapped it here in the video. Once you're all done scrapping, you can either build your own base or there's actually an option here from Horizon to upgrade your settlement and you can upgrade it and you can also repair some things. So for example, if I want to upgrade to tier one here, I can do that with some wooden steel. You can also upgrade to tier two and that will require some more stuff, but we have plenty. You can check tier three here. Notice this requires workshop construction rank one, but you do get that by default, I believe. So we can go ahead and do this one as well. However, once you get to tier four, we will not have enough glass for this tier. So you have to find some more glass in order to actually get this upgrade. However, once we're here, we can repair the house roofs. We can repair the walls, repair the doors. We can even do housing, lighting, and street lamps once we have tier four, but that requires some more glass. We can also rebuild the destroyed homes here. And there are lots more options here as well. So now we've got almost a pre-war sanctuary. Pretty nice place. In the architect menu, which is added by Horizon, you can add some utilities here, and this is where some of the important stuff comes into play. The biggest thing you'll want to add right off the bat is a universal crafting station. This will allow you to craft many of the things that Horizon requires. And here you're going to find a universal crafting station, which will allow you to craft technology and workshop upgrades, which is what you're going to be using to upgrade stuff in Horizon. Chemistry medical is for your chem bench. Cooking and supplies is for cooking, of course. Weapons and ammo is not the weapons bench. This is actually for crafting ammunition and making special weapons. Clothing and armor is not your armor workbench. That's a separate workbench. This is actually to make items you can use to upgrade your armor, whether it be power armor or regular armor. You can also craft certain armor pieces here as well. The trading market terminal is somewhere where you can trade excess items for things you might need. For weapons, you can use a weapon workbench right here. This will allow you to modify your weapons as normal. For armor, you can use the armor workbench right here. You'll see many new slots you can add stuff to here, and that will be of use later on. We won't be able to do anything right now, except for maybe a simple lining that will give us a bit more damage resist. You can also set the item lock to on, and that will allow you to make sure you never scrap an item. To the right, you're going to find the experimentation lab. This is useful for whenever you scrap items, you can learn how to make them. You want to come back here every so often and hit reverse engineering. This will allow you to learn the items that you have scrapped. You'll see you have three new unlocks here. We're going to reverse engineer all weapons now. Doesn't matter if you scrap things in the field or if you scrap them here in the base, you're going to get the parts and you'll learn how to make them. So now we can go into here and construct a weapon and we can see what weapons we can actually make. We have the N80 and N99 pistols that we can craft. We have insufficient parts to make this, but once we have pistol weapon parts, we could do this. You'll also notice this tinkering option here. If you go into here, you can see what your current weapon crafting skill is. This increases over time from crafting weapons and also from scrapping weapons and learning how to construct them. You can also make weapon tinker kits in the technology bench, which we just discussed, and that will give you 50 skill and some experience per tinker kit used. However, these are kind of costly to make, so you don't want to make these until you're sure you can afford the excess. The higher your weapon crafting skill is, the higher quality your weapons will be whenever you make them, and the more damage you can have on them. If you want more info, there's also this help option here for more weapon crafting information. Down here below the chemistry crafting bench, you'll notice this training and skills option here. You can go into the skills menu here and you can see what your skills currently are. Unlike the base game of Fallout 4, which just has perks, Horizon also has skills. So for example, lock picking a safe out in the world or a door would increase my lock picking skill by a small amount. Harvesting enemies will give me a small bonus to my hunting skill. You also notice in the skills menu that you can select a specialization. These come at level 15 and level 30. Once you meet the level requirement and the perk requirements for a given specialization, you can then unlock that and it will give you bonuses based on the weapon that you're using. There's more information down here below in the documentation menu if you wish to learn more about these things. If you ever want to know what skill your weapon currently uses, you can check down here under which skill does my current weapon use. You can access the same menu out in the field by going into your field kit and going to skills menu. Another feature Horizon adds is the ability to have your settlers go on missions for you. You can manage this from the command table up on top of the crafting station here. 
Here you can see how many settlements you have claimed, how many of these are expeditions, and we'll talk about these more later, and if any of your settlements are communities, and if so, if they have a special bonus for being a certain type of community. In order to be a community, a settlement has to have at least 15 settlers, and you'll have to meet certain requirements. For example, a military outpost will have to have a certain number of military defenses in order to be considered a military outpost, as well as having 15 settlers. You also have to have, I believe, 80 happiness. Once again, if you want to know more about this system, it's all down here in the documentation menu. The main thing you'll be doing here is checking your command missions menu. So assuming you have settlers assigned to a mission job station, you can send them out on missions. They will then complete their missions and bring back items for you. If you want to grab stuff your settlers have gotten for you, you can do so here in the open mission container menu. There's currently nothing here, but once there is, you can just hit R to take all and it will go directly into your inventory. You can then dump it off into your main base. You can also check the deployment settings here and you can turn it on to deploy all missions automatically. Note that these do use resources, so for example, militia would use like supply kits, technicians and engineers will probably use up some common tools, etc. So make sure that you have sufficient supplies for them to actually go on their missions, otherwise they cannot. From here you can also open your mailbox, and when you have new followers or join new factions, do certain quests for them, you will get messages here, and some of them are very, very important and vital to your settlement progression, so make sure you check this every time you come back to base. Once you receive something in the mail, you have to open up your mailbox container and receive it from here, just like your command mission container. You can also send out magazines in your outgoing mailbox container. So if you have spare magazines that you're not that you're not using, you can send those out. So for example, I've already read this grognak, so I can put this in here and then exit the menu. And within 24 hours, it will deliver some money back to me. And pre-war money can be used either just to sell for credits or it can be used for certain trades in the trading market terminal. The next thing I want to build is a resource station. However, you'll notice that we don't have the required workshop technology level one for this. We can address this by going into the crafting station and going to tech and workshop and going to workshop upgrades technology. From here, you can do a variety of upgrades that will increase your workshop tech level. We don't currently have the materials for any of these, so the resource station will have to wait. And one of your early goals will be getting the materials and the skills required to get one of these upgrades to be able to increase your workshop tech level. You can also increase your workshop tech level by doing training. However, this only starts for workshop tech level rank three and trading level rank two. So you'll wanna make sure that you have an income of these materials to constantly use. You get one workshop training session per day. So make sure you use it, make sure you come back to base and make sure you train. This menu is pretty extensive. There's a lot of things in here. And I'm not going to go into every single one of them because it's just a bit much for to talk about. But uh, just know that there's a whole bunch of useful stuff in here you can make. For example, you can make auto hackers to get into computers. You can make auto dialers to get into safes. You probably want to have some of these on you at all times. That way you can make sure to get into those pesky safes that you can't open normally. Once you're more established, you might notice this cargo bot chip. These are used to actually increase your carry weight, so you can craft these and then activate them later on. They require a lot of materials though, and it's going to be difficult to get those until later. Of course, while we're here, we're going to want to dump everything into our workstation here. You also notice we have a bunch of stuff in here we can grab that was scrapped automatically for us by the game. So we have a magazine package here. We have these items worth caps. These are worth quite a few caps. Anything that should be sold as opposed to being scrapped is now worth caps. These are things that make sense that people would actually want. Things like antique valuables, cigars, cigarettes, the American flag, etc. We'll grab our chems and our ammo that's in here, and the rest can stay in here. Back in the architect base menu, within the build menu, you'll want to go over to food and farming, and you'll want to go over to workbenches and wild gardens. You'll want to make a farming workbench here at some point. You can move default items into the compost bin. This will move items like diseased and grisly meat that cannot be used for anything else into here. And those will decompose and be used as fertilizer for our crops later on. From here you can also access the production manager which will allow you to create new crops from seed crops. So we go to select active services and let's say we want to get some mute fruit from wild mute fruit. And we want to get some 
melons from wild melons. Except, and there you go. Converting those will allow us to plant them to be used later on. You'll get these sealed magazine packages throughout the world. You'll want to make sure that you go into your aid and periodically use these. They will give you a random magazine that actually increased my workshop construction level, which is going to be nice. I can make more advanced things here. Before we head out into the wider world, there are a couple of things we want to check in Sanctuary. First off, there is, in fact, a cellar back here towards the back of Sanctuary. So we back behind the teal-colored house here. There's a root cellar. And there's a survival bunker back here. Quite a few good things in here, so make sure you come back. There is a cargo bot already made for us here, as well as a custom SMG, which uses 38 round bullets be very helpful early on. Some field supplies and some other basic stuff here. You'll find that most of the purified water has now been replaced in the world with aluminum canisters. This makes you get a random item from this, but it's never water. So just be aware of that. Water is much more difficult to come by, especially in distillation mode. And it's one of the main goals of the early game is to get enough water. Now, since I've made some bypass safe things, I can actually bypass this lock. Don't think I can pick this. I can't lock pick it, but I can just bypass it with the auto dialer that I just made. And there we go, another magazine. And some useful stuff there. A whole bunch of nice medical supplies there. And that should be everything in here. There's also a bed down here. And you could live down here if you wanted to, I suppose. Now that we've gotten the stuff from that, you'll notice that we can make a resource station. So we're going to go back to our base over here and make one of those. Resource stations are very useful because if you don't have high charisma, you can use these to link your settlements together. You no longer need to have the local leader perk in order to do that. Though it is nice to have, but six charisma is quite a lot to have in the early game. To set up a cargo line, you can access your resource station. It's going to initially tell you that your master workbenches will be Sanctuary Hills, and everything that you get from other linked workbenches will be sent to Ma Sanctuary Hills then. You can change your master workbench at any time in here by going to Manage Master Workbench. You can also manage your production in here, and there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do in here, which I'm not going to go into in this video. I'll probably do a separate video about production in Horizon later on. Anything you set up through production will end up in your production storage here whenever it produces things for you. So things like your crops, or perhaps things that are produced in your factories that you can make later on, etc. It all goes into here. You can even make ammo automatically later on. You can also access this courier trading system, which allows you to trade with other couriers throughout the Commonwealth. You no longer have to visit them in person. You can trade with everyone from right here. This gives you a very good reason to upgrade your workshop trading level within the technology bench, because every trading level will unlock new merchants that you can trade with through this system. If you want to manage your local supply line, you can do so here. We don't currently have a second settlement to set up a supply line to, so we can't actually make one. But if we did, we could set it here. To rectify that, we can go down to Red Rocket and scrap stuff over there. And down here, of course, we find everyone's best friend, Dog Meat. Hey, boy. What are you doing out here all by yourself? You notice that you can actually salvage some of the things in the world now. You can salvage these and get very nice parts from them that can be used for crafting later on. This requires a salvaging skill of A though, which we don't have yet. And here the mole rats are. That is a particularly big scary one. And level 2, hooray. you also notice in Horizon, at certain levels you'll get bonus perk points. That's because there are lots of perks in Horizon that you need to take for crafting. You want to be able to have extra perks then to be able to get those. Quick tip, you can actually smack the ground where a mole rat is hiding, and they'll pop right out. Taking some damage here, so it'd be a good time to go ahead and heal. Let's go ahead and bind our first aid supplies. I'm going to bind these to 6 for myself. This also has a small time to apply as well, and it heals you very slowly over time, so don't expect this to just heal you right away. Now that we've cleaned up the place, we can go ahead and use the workshop to claim it. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing here. We're going to go into utilities, and we're going to make a scrap station here. Use some simple tools for that, which I should be able to find around here by scrapping a few things. If you're looking for a simple tool, this broom back here should do the trick. 
yeah, so now we can make a scrap cleanup station. We'll go ahead and go into here and we're going to scrap everything. You'll also notice this destroyed purification unit here. Later on, we can make our own water purification unit, which allows us to actually make water that is purified. Currently, though, we can only make sanitized water. It's very, very difficult to get purified water in Horizon. So this one we can only salvage for parts. So now I could go in here and manually move everything over to Sanctuary. However, it's much easier to set up a supply line and just do it that way. So let's run back to Sanctuary. So we can go into our resource station here. And if we go down to Manage Local Supply Line, we can select this supply line to go to Red Rocket. Supply line has been established. We can now go into here and we can force it to send stuff over here. If I go to Manage Master Workbench and go to Move All Items to Master Workbench, it will move everything over from there to us. It'll tell us that it's moved 1,404 items. So all the things that were over there are now going to be here. At this point, we're pretty well set up. And if you want to go straight into Concord and get the Minutemen, you can. If you want to explore around Sanctuary a bit more and get some materials first, you can. However you want to play it, it's really up to you. Well guys, that's it for this video. I know there's a lot I haven't covered, but Horizon is just so massive. It's such a huge overhaul and doing it justice to completely tell you everything you need to know would be like a five hour video. It really is quite a bit. And really you're better off just playing the game yourself and figure it out as you go. However, I will be doing more videos like this, so if you have suggestions of things you'd like to see, certain topics you'd like to have covered, or just a quick question, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I do try to read them all and try to answer them when I can. But I hope that this has given you all kind of a starting off point if you're wanting to jump into Horizon but have been too intimidated by the learning curve of it. In the meantime, if you want to check out some more content of mine that is Horizon based, I have a full playthrough, 150 long episodes of Horizon, where I go from zero all the way to the end game, do every DLC, every quest pretty much in the game. And a lot of people have told me that those playthroughs are extremely helpful for them, although they are rather long. So hopefully I can give you a bit more of a condensed version with videos like this in the future. And of course, if this was helpful and you want to see more, hit that like button, subscribe, etc. It really helps me a lot. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.